This beautiful velvety plant is called Philodendron heteraceum. Some people might know it actually as Philodendron micans, but the updated scientific name is Philodendron heteraceum. And this is a specific version that is a little bit more velvety because you could find philodendron heteraceums that are not velvety. So I don't know if really this is a juvenile form or just a different kind of cultivar or variety um, of, of the particular plant, but this kind of deeper velvety look is something that I know a lot of people absolutely love in houseplants. This is one of my smaller philodendron heteraceums. I have a lot larger ones, but I think just in the uh, the ability to be able to show you this, I think it's, it's better with the smaller ones. I have some actually growing in my green wall, which have been growing in my green wall probably now for as long as I've had the green wall. So I'd say about seven years and they could get pretty leggy. These are particularly vining plants. So they really do make beautiful hanging basket plants, but they could get somewhat bald on top and then put the leaves towards the bottom, especially if you're not giving it some top-down light. So these are plants that really take well to being cut back um, and even also being propagated because you could kind of clip them below a node and they will actually propagate really on the ready. These plants are uh, typically found in like the Caribbean or you could actually find them through Central and South America. So they are pretty prolific growers. And I think that's part of the reason why they've actually made their way into the houseplant market. A lot of philodendrons are really easy for people to take care of because you could actually manage them in kind of moderate light conditions. They will grow fine in bright light screen conditions. You might even be able to get away with doing low light conditions. But for the most part, these are, are plants that really thrive in kind of moderate light conditions. They do like a little bit of water. So I tend to um, have them growing in a little less of a well-draining soil mix, so it's a little bit heavier on the peat. And I water this one probably twice a, a week. And it's also, I have to water it a little bit more. You'll actually see that I just gave it some water here. Um, I water it a little bit more just because it's in a, a little bit of a smaller container, so there's not much soil around these particular roots. So that's something that you want to consider. If it was in a larger container, it'd probably have a little bit more moist um, soil because there's more soil to en end up taking in some of that moisture. Fertilizing, these plants actually do grow quite quickly in um, during the spring, summer, and fall months, which is you know considered the growing season. So you can give it a 20-20-20 fertilizer and do it on a more bi-weekly basis. And again, if you're giving a synthetic fertilizer like a 20-20-20, then make sure that you cut that in half. So if it's like a half teaspoon to a gallon, make sure you're giving it like a quarter teaspoon to a gallon. And if you're using organic fertilizer, then you don't have to worry about cutting it in half because it'll probably be a very gentle fertilizer. As far as pests go with this particular plant, you can find spider mites on it, maybe eventually like mealybugs or scale, but for the most part, my philodendrons have been really resilient to pests. And I would say that these are common house plants for so many different reasons. And, um, and one of the easiest and the most rewarding to grow. So if you're looking for a great hanging basket plant or something that will trellis up very nicely, then this is a great choice for you.